GTA 6's setting is all but confirmed. Star Citizen's next major update is dropping tomorrow. The remake of a beloved Star Wars game was cancelled and much more on Today in Gaming. Hey guys, Levelcap here. Industry insider Jason Schreer revealed new Grand Theft Auto 6 info. Rockstar hasn't officially announced anything, so take this as speculation, but it's a safe bet that if Schreer says it, there's at least some truth to it. According to Jason, GTA 6's campaign will take place in Miami, Florida. This has been the popular rumor since June last year. The rumors suggest that the game is set in the 80s rather than a current day setting. The title is also currently codenamed Project Americas, and was initially planned to include vast chunks of North and South America as playable areas. However, this was deemed too ambitious, leading to focus on Miami instead. Rockstar does plan to update the game with post-launch content that adds new missions and cities though. The game will also feature more interior spaces than past GTA games. GTA 6 will also feature the series' first female protagonist. The game will feature a pair of playable characters rather than GTA 5's trio. Apparently, the campaign is influenced by Bonnie and Clyde, so the two protagonists will likely have a closely connected story. Unfortunately for fans of the franchise, we'll be waiting at least two more years to play GTA 6. This is in part due to the pandemic slowing down development, but Rockstar have also made massive changes to their development process following scathing reports about toxic company culture, crunch, and harassment. In fact, Jason was the original lead on those reports, and his latest report suggests that things have improved, which is great to hear. It also sounds like frustration about the long wait for GTA 6 is something that Rockstar is keenly aware of. They released a massive update for GTA Online called Criminal Enterprises. Many reviewers say it's the best and biggest addition to the game in ages. The update includes many quality of life improvements like being able to run into casinos and nightclubs without a loading screen. Shortcuts for equipping armor and eating snacks to restore health has also been added. Previously, you had to dive into submenus to do this, which made gunfights feel a bit more tedious. As for the actual new content, there is a new mission line focused on the IAA, which is GTA's version of the CIA. The goal is to uncover a conspiracy behind inflated gas prices during a major heat wave. Criminal Enterprises also overhauls some existing content with more fleshed out missions and mechanics. It might not be the most significant new addition ever, but it adds a ton of new content and hints at a future for the game beyond just new skins or throwaway missions. Star Citizen's developers confirmed that Update 3.17.2 will raise the player cap per server from 50 to 100 when it goes live tomorrow. This increased server cap has been part of the latest test phase. Initially, the devs said that they were not planning on increasing the player cap per server, but the test went so well that they've decided to double it. When this update goes live tomorrow, it'll introduce a new mission event called the Siege of Orison. However, because this mission was originally designed to function with 50 players, servers will run with a lower player count when the mission is active. This is part of a new dynamic player cap system that will work in the background to ensure the general experience remains stable. Overall, this update is a massive step forward for the game. Star Citizen's end goal is to be a proper MMO with thousands of players simultaneously playing in the universe far away and in close proximity to each other. It'll hopefully achieve this with server meshing, which will hopefully be released towards the end of the year that will run multiple servers in parallel to host lots of players. But for now, doubling the player count per server is a major milestone. There's also tons of other content being added with 17.2, including balance changes and new missions. Hunt Showdown's Serpent Moon event is live and it adds the game's first ever battle pass. It offers the typical free and paid progression tracks. There's also nine new legendary items to unlock as part of the past. Serpent Moon isn't just a battle pass though, it also makes some big changes to Hunt's gameplay and maps. The first edition is a new time of day setting with a full moon at night. Hunt's typical night setting is nearly pitch black with lanterns and pale light from the sky illuminating the map. The new full moon setting offers improved visibility while still offering a moody and dark experience. It sounds like the time of day option will be removed when the event ends on September 26th. Serpent Moon also implements a new leaderboard system similar to the ranking system of other titles. The higher you rank, the better your reward will be when the season ends. It'll also be the first time you get a displayed ranking in the game. 
According to leaks, two major titles will be included in next month's PlayStation Plus's free game, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 and Yakuza Like a Dragon. Both titles were highly praised by reviewers and players, Pro Skater 1 and 2 was even the franchise's fastest selling game ever. The latest Xbox earning call revealed some key details about the sales of their latest generation console. The Xbox Series X and S are outselling all previous Xbox consoles from when they launched to two years later, which is how long their new consoles have been on store shelves. Xbox didn't give exact sales figures, but they did say that they are starting to decline from the previous quarter. Xbox hardware sales in particular are down 11%, that's most likely due to the pandemic easing up in most parts of the world. Despite the downturn, however, Xbox is still up 12% overall. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake by Aspire is on hold after the project's director was fired last month. The remake has also been in development for three years, but it sounds like progress was happening too slowly to meet their 2022 release window. Despite Lucasfilm and Sony being happy with a recent vertical slice demo, the management at Aspire wasn't and refused to spend more money on development. Aspire was recently sold to Embracer Group, so more funding could be possible. Embracer has stated that they're happy to essentially float studios in the short term as they develop new games rather than demanding all studios turn a profit between titles. A $100 million settlement has been approved between Riot Games and a group of female developers who sued the company for gender discrimination in 2018. They initially settled the lawsuit for $10 million in 2019, but the group suing Riot hired new lawyers who rejected the settlement and sent it back to litigation. The state of California also intervened, saying the initial settlement was rushed. Riot will pay the new settlement to roughly 1,000 female employees who worked for Riot between 2014 and 2021. As part of the settlement, Riot agreed to three years of independent oversight to ensure a fair practice and to make at least 40 female contractors full-time employees. Halo Infinite's Forge mode is scheduled to launch in September, but we already have leaks showcasing a remake of the infamous shipment map from Call of Duty. The leaked footage reveals several key features coming in Forge mode. These include weather effects, special objects like rubble and fire, and the ability to place dead bodies on the map. These features indicate that a proper story experience could be possible on a Forge map. The Meta Quest 2, aka the Oculus Quest 2, is getting a $100 price hike on August 1st. Meta blames the price increase on rising costs. The Quest 2 has been the most affordable premium VR headset around since it launched in 2020. The $300 price tag made it the most popular headset on the market, and while it initially launched as a standalone device, software updates have improved its tethered experience to be on par with other headsets. It even features wireless tethering now. Meta are launching new VR our hardware at the end of the year that will probably be even more expensive. The studio behind the Ali Ali skateboard game franchise is branching out with their upcoming title, Roller Dome. It's a single-player, third-person shooter roller skate game. They announced it last month, but released gameplay previews yesterday that gave us our first look at what to expect. Performing tricks and shooting enemies go hand in hand. Certain enemy attacks can only be dodged by landing tricks, and some areas of the map can only be accessed by tricking up to them. Roller Dome launches on August 16th for PC and PlayStation. Before we get to our final story today, let us know in the comments if there's any games or topics that you think we should cover in future updates. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, it's a great way to support the channel. The long-awaited Source 2 update for CSGO might be announced in August. Several prominent CSGO creators, such as Warl, have been invited to Valve for a closed-door event next month. In the past, Valve have invited press and content creators into the company's HQ to preview upcoming games, hardware, or just ask specific people at the studio questions. Right now, it seems like Valve are finalizing their Source 2 port of CSGO. The CSGO website is also getting overhauled with new ways of pushing content to it that aren't possible with the current version of the game. There have also been internal playtest leaks showing developers playing on Source 2 versions of existing maps, though it's tough to say if Valve are actually launching the Source 2 update next month, if they're going to officially announce it next month, or if they're just inviting respected community members to give feedback. Regardless, you can expect some big news in the near future. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.